Next up is Ryan Lance, the chairman and CEO of Comical uh, Films. Good luck. So I guess we got to be brief, so I'm going to go quickly. Thank you, it's, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great opportunity to be here at a special forum. You know, our globalized industry is, uh, has very few secrets. So new technology management methods, geological theories, and market trends sp uh, spread quickly around the world. And that's good news for emerging energy producers like Kazakhstan to learn from what the rest of us are doing. When you consider today's topic, uh, era of fossil-based energies, it's ironic that so many people have assumed that peak oil was here and this era would end soon. And in fact, the uh, oil would start to decline and the natural gas would follow. But certainly advanced technologies is adding new resources so fast that peak oil has receded. And the natural gas is climbing to areas that no one predicted even five years ago. So future supply will be increasingly come from sources that are developed through recent technological innovation. Among them are the unconventionals that have been talked about today. Also, we anticipate production coming from technically challenged reason, regions that have yet to be explored, like the Arctic and some of the deep water areas. And third, we're having a grow global trade in LNG, which uh, one of our BG representatives talked about today. And then fourth, enhanced oil recovery represents enormous potential. 50% of the oil that we recover today is still locked in the rock beneath the surface. Through these innovations, fully one-third of the new production that will come over the next 15 years is going to come from unconventional sources, sources that only became part of the uh, energy equation in the past decade. And for example, the shell oil revolution has transformed North America's energy potential. As recently as the early 1990s, U.S. natural gas production reserves and demand were falling. But since then, proof reserves are up 68%, production is rising fast, and the U.S. now has a century of supply. Meanwhile, the shell revolution is spreading to the liquid side as well. U.S. oil reserves peaked in 1970, then by 2008 had fallen in half. But since that time, reserves have grown. Our annual production has increased 14%, mostly from shale, and it's the first meaningful production growth in more than two decades. So North America now is essentially energy independent in natural gas, an achievement once thought and considered impossible. And thanks to both oil shale and the Canadian oil sands, North America could become a next net exporter of oil by 2025. So much of the world has shale oil potential. And this, this opportunity has not been fully accessed around the world, including areas like the Caspian. So the industry's technological capability and the world resource potential gives us much to be excited about. However, there are some challenges. There's restricted access. There's worsening fiscal representation in many of the countries. And in the extreme cases, we have contract abrogation and even nationalization. Rising costs are a concern with the more geologically challenged and the remote locations that we deal with. And we face increased government regulation, as well as rising standards on the environmental and social performance. But our industry has improved greatly through the years in these areas, and we must continue this progress. So example, past in, uh, sorry, that brings me to Kazakhstan that I want to talk about today. There's a major resource potential here, but it's challenged in terms of its stranded nature and its high sulfur content. Projects are subject to delays and cost pressures. And to attract continuing investment, Kazakhstan must compete against other host nations in its transparency, its fiscal stability, and its regular regulatory predictability. And it's making strides there, we must add. So the opening of Kazakhstan to foreign investment has greatly benefited its citizens. And Kazakhstan's economic growth has been truly impressive. Now, with the Kashkin field approaching startup, Kazakhstan is entering a new era project is certainly a historical milestone, and ConocoPhillips and its partners are working to turn challenges into those mutual opportunities. So let me point out some other examples of uh, Kazakhstan that are coming into the new world today. We certainly have improving local resource availability and content are particularly promising. We're committed to developing highly trained local personnel, so we provide local professional training, and we have a number of Kazakh trainees at our facilities in the U.S., and we're working with Kazmini Gas to train more of the Kazakh citizen. The government recognizes the current the lack of technicians and engineers, and the availability of qualified local personnel in sufficient numbers is essential for Kazakhstan to meet its development goals. It's also in the best interest of all the stakeholders to alleviate this shortfall. 
Conical Phillips believes that the ongoing development of Nazarbayev University is vital, and we provide assistance through our educational partnership program to both male and female students. So in addition, Kazakhstan, to achieve its full potential economic diversification, it must industrialize other sectors and expand the value chains beyond the extractive oil industry. President Nazarbayev talked about that at the FIC conference yesterday and this morning. Fortunately, there are substantial natural gas and unconventional energy potential here. So we encourage Kazakhstan to develop its shale gas and its coal bed methane. So in closing, we're eager to share our operational, technological, and business experience and our expertise, and thus help drive Kazakhstan's sustainable development. So we're excited about the future of Kazakhstan, certainly excited about the future of the